Welcome to Don Dickerman Ministries. Don Dickerman's office is in the back of the Vineyards Antique Mall. Let's walk back to the office with Don and his friends. Let's go in Don's office. Once in the office, you'll see that there are prayer rooms. There's an intercessory prayer room where people gather to make intercessory prayer. Don has an awesome staff that work with him. Well, uh, this is a typical deliverance setting. Uh, when you come here, you'll be either in this office or an office similar to this with one of our deliverance teams. I recommend you read our books before coming, uh, Serpents in the Sanctuary and Turmoil in the Temple. Uh, the better prepared you are for deliverance, the more efficient your deliverance will be. And we want you to feel unthreatened, feel comfortable, uh, uh, to know that um, we welcome you here. You're not required to do anything except want to be free. And. Um, so I hope this, this little video we put together is going to help you relax and to know that when you come, you're just one of a thousand, uh, maybe 25,000 that have been through this process and, uh, and expect to be free. And I just want to share uh, my deliverance experience that I had with uh, this ministry uh, and how it really changed my life. Um, I got healed of fibromyalgia during the session and I also got healed of female problems which now it's just really had changed my life I feel so much better and at one point in time I couldn't even hardly touch my arms because they were so sore from the fibromyalgia that um, right after the deliverance I no immediately noticed a difference and uh, I just wanted to share with y'all today what a change it has made in my life and how spiritually much uh, how much of change it has made spiritually and uh, I just wanted to share that little piece with you right there and how that deliverance has really uh, been great for me. My testimony to you right now is that it is a wonderful ministry. It is a real, very real ministry that is going on right now. I've seen too many wonderful results from people that have gone through deliverance. And if you feel that you're being uh, oppressed in any way by the demonic, uh, You'd be very, very foolish not to uh, make this ministry available to yourself by seeking someone that knows how to take you through deliverance and help you and pray with you. I've seen healings. I didn't even mention that, but uh, my own grandson who suffered with ear infections from a, from a baby until he was 11 years old, uh, I took him through deliverance. You, you might say, well, what possible sin uh, could a, a child have that would open up a door to allow the demonic to come in and cause illnesses, cause an ear infection, and, and these things. How can children be oppressed? But the demons can enter through permission from ancestral curses. Uh, there's, there's, there's different areas, different ways that they can come in, even through the, uh, the sins of our forefathers. Um, at any rate, uh, what I, the point I'm trying to make right now is the fact that many of our illnesses, as a matter of fact, I would almost uh, go as far as to say probably most of our illnesses are caused by spiritual oppression. I've seen a lot of healings take place once the spirit, the demon spirits are cast out. Uh, if they don't cause the illness, many times they, if nothing else, prevent it from being healed. So they do have a powerful force. If you'll, All you have to do is read the scriptures and see how many times Jesus healed simply by casting out the demons. So this is this is my testimony to you is that it's a very real ministry. It is nothing to fear. The demons cannot hurt you. We have uh, total authority over them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are a believer and you are a Christian, you don't have anything to fear from demons. Uh, their main power over us is really just fear. Fear itself. They try to make you fear them. They try to tell you lies and convince you that they can hurt you. And this is absolutely tr uh, untrue. If they could really harm us, believe me, they don't love us, they would have already harmed us as much as they could. So it's not, a, it's not anything to fear when you're dealing with the demonic. 
as far as I'm concerned, being ignorant of what's going on with the demonic, that's something that we should fear because that's where they have the victory is by keeping by us being ignorant uh, of what their power is. And their power is so limited, it's so small that uh, we're just foolish to allow them to continue to uh, oppress us in our lives. So if you're considering deliverance, I would strongly suggest that you, you press forward, take a step of faith and press forward in that, and you'll find out that the Lord Jesus Christ can truly set you free. Six months, or I'll say a year, prior to me going through a deliverance, if someone would have said, what is deliverance, I wouldn't even have known. I wouldn't even known anything about deliverance. So, uh, and I think that's where we are today. We've got so many people that, that are really and truly, uh, they're, they're, they're ignorant, innocently, of deliverance. They don't know anything about it. They've never been taught anything. They haven't been taught in the church. They haven't spent enough time to be taught in the Word because it's in the Word. It, the Lord shows you just beautiful in the Word exactly about deliverance. But I didn't know anything about deliverance, but praise the Lord, I do now and I feel free. I knew there were some things in my life that were not totally walking in the victory that God wanted me to walk in. And I knew there was some depression and some things like that. And I met Don through some friends that I trusted and prayed with him and realized that some doors had opened to the enemy through uh, through divorce and through some surgeries that I'd had when I was um, not really conscious and even through an accident. And um, I was just set free from that um, just by um, the power of the Holy Spirit, just praying. And um, it's helped me to walk in that victory. In, a, in any typical traditional church on Sunday morning uh, what percentage of the of the people sitting in the congregation would have demons well I think that a conservative estimate would be that 95 percent of all of the believers in the world today either now have a demonic problem or have had mm -hmm. and I believe that Satan for centuries has been comfortable setting in a good conservative evangelical church listening to powerful messages of the Word of God mm -hmm. and just sitting there and enjoying himself mm -hmm. it doesn't bother him as long as no one has pointed the finger at him to identify his presence or to identify the things that he does in the lives of the believer he'll sit there and be quiet but let one person point the finger at him and he'll blow the place apart. Mm -hmm. why, why do you think this is not taught in seminaries? Uh, in, in a typical, uh, uh, I guess, conservative, fundamental, evangelical seminary, uh, why, why, don't, why don't preachers come out prepared for this? I think there's two reasons. One is that the people who are in charge of of the program do not even believe it. Hmm. They can't teach it because they don't know it. The people who go to those places learn too well the lessons of the dogmas of men. Hmm. That's what happened to me. See, God had to really deal with me over that 27 hour period to even shake me loose from what I, I was certain this was just a whole lot of baloney. Mm -hmm. the, this was nuts. Mm -hmm. And God had to show me that no, it's not, it's real. And, and it's going to take people in a positions of, 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 shall we say, professors in these Bible colleges or seminaries who have sufficient knowledge of it and the courage of their convictions to say to their students now in the past you've been told this but it's not the truth this is the truth mm -hmm. and you had better learn it because I can tell you that one day sometime in your ministry you are going to come face to face with a demon power mm -hmm. and you had better know how to handle it mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I've asked that question and been asked that question 
a lady uh, so close to me that uh, she's the volunteer secretary for our ministry and she had many many demons uh, I suspected it because I knew her past she'd been abused as a child she had seven stepfathers growing up and she was sick all the time this and then that and, but um, her husband was there the night uh, she experienced deliverance and his question to me was and he's a music director at a Baptist church his question to me was how do we get this information to the people and I said I, I'm not sure I said maybe it's going to have to come from somebody like her to testify look I don't care what you say this is what I used to be this is you know some somebody's going to have to stand up and and I said it really needs to come from the pulpit and he said it's not going to come from the pulpit <laughs> but you see that's where it really needs to start Salvation is the first step of deliverance. The word salvation, the Greek word, means deliverance. Mm -hmm. So it is, salvation is a measure of deliverance. Now, the thing that I found most helpful to, to uh, illustrate how a Christian can have a temple is, you know, the scripture says, for example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. It says your, your body is not your own. It, you've been purchased with a price. Jesus has purchased us. So we belong to Him. So when we have a new birth experience, what happens? The Holy Spirit comes in to indwell us. And as a temple. You remember God in the Old Testament dwelt in the temple. He dwelt where in the temple? In the Holy of Holies. Yeah. There were three areas of the temple. You've got the outer court. You've got the holy place. And you've got the Holy of Holies. Now God dwelt in the Holy of Holies, but He expected that His presence there would influence everything that transpired within mm -hmm. the working of that temple and all of its sacrifices and everything. All right, We're a temple. We're tripart beings. We're body, soul, and spirit. So new birth takes place in the spirit. Mm -hmm. That's where the Holy Spirit dwells within us. Mm -hmm. And we're not casting demons out of people spirits who've been born again. We're dealing with things that are in the soulish area of their life, in their minds, in their emotions, in their will, and then in their physical bodies. So this is where the cleansing takes place. Another thing that Scripture to tie that in with is that one time Jesus came into the temple and He was very upset with what He found in the temple. Mm -hmm. He found the cattle, He found the money changers and all that taking place. And it says, He cast them out of the temple. Now God's presence was in that temple. Mm -hmm. God's presence was there in the Holy of Holies. But the outer courts of the temple were defiled. And that's the way it is with us as Christians. And I think that will help a lot of people. I've sat in on several deliverances. And I have experienced deliverance myself. I um, have seen the wonderful power of the authority of the name of Jesus Christ and the authority that the Lord gives His children because of our position in Him, because of who we are in Him. And I have seen some awesome things. Um, the Lord wants to set His children free. He doesn't want us to be in bondage and oppression to the enemy. The enemy is attempting to kill, steal, and destroy everything he can that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to realize that, be on the alert, and know what to do about it when we are under attack from the enemy, and also recognize when the enemy has us in the grip of oppression. Um, the Lord even uses deliverance to heal many times. I have seen um, in deliverance people who have um, a, an oppression by the demons that even cause certain diseases in their bodies. Uh, and I have seen those diseases healed and seen the results of the healing. Uh, my husband experienced a healing of his thyroid through deliverance. There was um, some sort of control or bondage of his body in that area. Um, and through deliverance, he was able to stop taking the medication and had